Hello and welcome back to some more Aviary Attorney. Hopefully you enjoyed the insanity that was this morning's video. I'm back to normal now. I had my fun acting like an idiot for about 14 minutes plus the interaction on my Discord server earlier. We're done with that now. So now we are ready to continue normal operations and play some good old fashioned Aviary Attorney. So, we had some good headway in the trial yesterday. I don't know whether to feel good about that or not, because I no longer trust anything about this game after the events of the first case, but we're just gonna do our job. We're just gonna investigate around and see, this one's all us left, so I guess we'll go here, and we'll see what the game has in store for us this time. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Landra Hagelslack's Chocolate Emporium, the finest Belgian chocolate shop in all of Paris. I am Lander Hagelslack, the founder and owner of this establishment. I am J.J. Falcon, defense attorney. Good day, monsieur. Oh, lawyers. Very fancy. I must say that I once dreamed of being a lawyer, but, well, circumstances wouldn't allow it. It's a funny story. You see, when I was a young boy back in Gimmelstump, I befriended the son of a Hungarian attorney. Falcon, you have to help me. What is it? It's the smell, Falcon. It's overpowering me. It's demanding that I lay waste to the shop. For pity's sake, restrain yourself, Smellison. Oh, but I'm rambling, aren't I? So, are you messieurs here to buy some chocolate? Yes. No, 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 no. We're actually here on business, monsieur. Business? First things first. We believe this chocolate wrapper originated from your shop. Are we correct? Oh, yes, yes. That is indeed the trademarked Hagelslag wrapper for genuine Belgian Hagelslag chocolate. It is almost certainly bought from this very establishment. Very good. With that established, there is something else we wish to ask, monsieur Hagelslag. Uh, we wish to ask who bought the piece of chocolate. Can you tell us who bought the chocolate that was contained in this wrapper, Monsieur Hagelslack? I'm afraid not, Monsieur. Not just because of matters of confidentiality, although that is a fact that you understand, but because I couldn't possibly know that. I thought elephants never forget. My memory is impeccable, Monsieur, but you must understand that I have dozens of customers a day. There are hundreds of people who could have potentially bought this particular item. Hmm. So your memory is good, but you need further information. If we if we were to give you the description of a name and name of a person, would you be able to tell us whether they purchased something from? From you. Oh, yes, yes, that I could probably do, Monsieur. Let me think. Who to ask about? Uh, I'm gonna ask about the judge first and foremost. Where is that son of a bitch? Where is he? Where is he? Where the, 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 am I blind? I think I might be blind. Is there, no, I'm not. It's right here. This, this is what I wanna ask about. This guy right here is what I wanna know about. Have you ever served a heavy wolf in judicial robes named Judge Romulus? Yes, Monsieur. Alright. Have you ever served, whoa, whoa, wait, you just say yes? Yes, Monsieur. A wolf in judicial robes. I did serve a person like that a little while ago. On the 6th of January, to be precise. Did he say or do anything suspicious? Not that I can recall, Monsieur. He was a pleasant fellow. Big, toothy grin. Bought 200 grams of classic dark Belgian chocolate with a custom filling. A custom filling. Some type of caramel. He provided it himself, although he unfortunately did not bring enough for me to sample. <laughs> what does this mean, Falcon? Well, we shouldn't make assumptions, but I'm going to. It may just mean this judge liked to eat chocolate. Yeah, but if the judge's purchase is related to the rap at the crime scene, then... What's your haggle slack? Do you think I could get a copy of Judge Romulus's receipt? I can do you one better, Monsieur. I, excuse me, have the original right here. I keep them for tax purposes, you understand. Is it okay for us to take it, Monsieur? Absolutely. Memorizing the receipt's contents is trivial, after all. Talk to receipt added to your evidence folder. Would you look at this thing? Judge Romulus has signed it in green ink. Green ink? I knew Judge Romulus was shady, but only truly villainous people write in green. Thank you very much for your time, Monster Hagelslack. You have been enormously helpful. I am glad to be of service. I wish you the best of luck with your case, Monsieurs. Okay, well that went well. I mean, not that there was not that there was ever any doubt that the judge was shady, but now we just have further reason to believe it. Okay, so it's not time for the. I, I don't. I don't. We don't really have any choices here. We can go. Need a pick me up? Come along to Madame Quenelle's sudden student tavern on Rouge One. You're always welcome. Or go to the Louvre Palace, become a wolf himself, artist, scholars, and historians. Uh, I guess we'll just start down here. I don't really feel it. What? It seems like a very light investigation compared to the first one. So what are we doing today? Playing cards until we're flat out broke? Maybe. Let's see. So that's room to investigate. Uh, it's card room, I guess. I guess she did mention we can go to the card room. We just haven't been here yet. Well, now, just one more game of Jack Noir. Absolutely not, my wallet is hard enough as it is. Please, I'll even let you deal this time. The answer is no, Rufus. I'm skint. 
If you want me to play cards, you'll have to ask someone else. Fine, I'll ask that big fellow. Excuse me, Monsieur. Yes, you, Monsieur. Would you care to play some Jack Noir? Uh, do we have any other choices? Is this, is this going to develop the plot in some way? Absolutely. Deal me in, Monsieur. Very well, then. Do you know how to play? Do I, do I, do I have to actually play? What, what game are we playing here? Nope. I'm only familiar with Sago and Tap to Rock. Oh, this is much better than those silly games. Let me tell you how it works. I have a deck of cards with values between 1 and 11. I deal you one card at a time. If you hit 21, you win. I give you 5 francs. 5 francs? That seems a little steep. This is a man's game, Monsieur. How many children gamble over petty souls? Besides, I guess stakes make for a more exciting game, right? Suppose so. We're, 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 actually, we're actually playing cards. We're, we're really playing cards. Oh, my dear lord. Your turn. Oh, okay. Hey, did, what the? Oh, I, okay, I guess we're doing this now. We're playing. Okay, I lose. Yeah, with. Unlucky, Monsieur. Most unfortunate. Should I have another round? D no, 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 no. No, I don't want to. No. No, I think we're done. Maybe another day, Monsieur. I understand. Feel free to come back anytime. Uh. Is this room just, is this entire area just useless to us? I already hit the road? I guess so. Did we just waste our time? Was there, was there a point to do it? That, that was, that was just a card, that was just a card game. Wait, there was just, okay. No, no, I, I will, alright then. I'm feeling pretty confident about this. Are you? Because we just spent an entire day playing cards. The big picture is coming together nicely. I'm somewhat re relieved that Prince Swan came clean. His secret was putting the whole case in jeopardy. I think that might have been misspelled. I didn't get a closer look. We still got one day until the trial, but how to spend it? I suppose we could just visit the Louvre. Or maybe we should just play cards at, like, is something wrong, this person? You can usually quiet. Falcon, we need to talk. What's up? See, I was doing some thinking. A dangerous thing to do, I know. Anyway, I realized that we were missing a crucial piece of evidence. What evidence would that be? Well, we know that Major Hal consumed a piece of chocolate before we died, we know that he died of poisoning, but well, we still aren't sure that the chocolate was the cause. That's true. If we keep pushing the chocolate theory, Cocorico will almost certainly bring that up. So I thought to myself, if one were to, if one were to consume the wrapper itself, then that may provide proof of whether it, con it contains traces of poison. Well, sure, that could work, but that would be incredibly foolish. Wait, were you thinking of eating the wrapper, Sparrowson? Maybe. Well, stop those thoughts right now. I'm not going to let you potentially kill yourself like that. Heh. <laughs> I knew you would say that's why you already- I have- I had a feeling. I had a sinking feeling in my stomach might have already done that. 45 minutes ago. Sparrowson? Sparrowson! God damn it, Sparrowson. That is a ginormous needle. I- I had a feeling that he might have already done it, but- uh, Doctor, is Sparrowson okay? Well, he's not conscious right now, but he is stable. I think it's safe to say your friend is not on his deathbed. Oh, thank God. How did you say this happened again? It's a long story. Lowering occupational hazard. Doctor, can you tell me what poison caused this? I have no idea. I'm an expert in mental health, not toxicology. But I asked him for a specialist who should be here by tomorrow morning. He'll make a full assessment. That's good to hear. Thanks, Doctor. Take good care of him. Wait a moment. There was the matter of the bill. We'll have to discuss it later. I have an important case to prepare for, and I have one partner down. I see. Well, rest assured, your friend is in good hands. <sighs> this is terrible. What the hell was Sparrows in thinking? I can't win a case like this. Who are you? Did someone say something? Oh, is it is it the mouse again? Running around like a headless chicken, you one tricky lawyer to find. I told you to dr Oh. No, it's not the mouse, because this is I told you to drop the investigation, but you just wouldn't listen. Or is it him? Is it the mouse? Because you think we've been able to see him if it's... Au revoir, JJ Falcon. What just happened? Where am I? Am I dead? No, that can't be right. This is nighttime. I'm just sleeping. If I focus on count of three, I should be able to wake up. One, two... What the hell? What the hell is going on? I did it work? Why is it... Okay, you're dreaming. What the... What is... What is happening? Okay. Let me run, okay, let me run you through my thought process there. So my initial thought was, oh, it must be the mouse again, right? Because it's someone trying to get our attention who we can't see, so it must be really small and on the ground, right? Because that was the whole joke, was that he's like, where are you? I can't see you, Montreux. Sure. But we, allegedly, did we did push it into the river, and now we're dreaming about you? I can't believe... Oh, oh wait, oh no, we're not dreaming, we're actually, we, we woke up so... 
I can't believe how easy you were to fool. I put on a cutesy voice, acted all innocent, and you ate the whole thing up. Just shut up. I made no mistakes. I made no mistakes. I did my duty as a lawyer. Your duty put an innocent man on death row, Monsieur Falcon. I hope you're proud of that. It wasn't my fault. Hey, where are you going? Out of my way, so I mean, I'm not done talking to Demi Catalina. Okay, never mind. Okay, yeah, this is okay. This isn't. This absolutely is a dream. Okay, that was my first thought was because of all the wavy lines that he's dreaming this. But then he, but then I thought he was implying that she was the one who actually pushed him in the or kidnapped him or whatever. But no, this is this is all just okay. Cool, got it, understood. This, the past five minutes have been insane, or not even that. The past like two minutes. It wasn't my fault. There's not the excuse you make after all your failures. I'm not making excuses. Failure after failure after failure. No desire to improve yourself. You're a joke of a lawyer, JJ. Don't call me JJ. That's all you have to say? How pathetic. You don't even deserve to stand in your grandfather's shadow. My... my grandfather? I'll prove you wrong. I can do better. Oh, it's you, Spousen. Have you come to berate me too? What? No, 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 no. I'm just here to tell you to wake up. Wake up, Monsieur. Wake up. Hey, can you hear me? I said wake up. Where, where are we? Where did you... Oh, I, what the... F Come on, Monsieur, wake up. I said wake up. You're starting to worry me. Okay, yeah, so we were pushed into the river. Uh, oh, thank goodness. I wasn't sure whether I would have to find a doctor or a mortician. So that's so why... So that is what happened, is that someone stuck up on us, shoved us into the river, and then we had a dream about how, how much we suck at everything. Cool. That's what I assumed... Well, that was my initial assumption, but then everything went insane and I wasn't entirely sure. Okay. Oh, my head. Where am I? The Pont d'Ar. You know, by the Louvre, in Paris, France. And that's fish you out of the same. Nearly broke my rod doing it. Wait, I know you! You're the disrespectful lawyer guy! Jiro Falco or something! What time is it? Actually, what day is it? You weigh your head pretty hard, huh? It's the 21st of January and around 9 o'clock in the morning, by my reckoning. 21st... Then a clock. Oh no, the trial! I should have been at the court of assistance ten minutes ago. Well, you're running late, but take it easy, monster. I'm sure they'll be innocent. No, they won't. Maybe if I sprint it. In your condition? That'd be stupid. Take a seat. Clear your head. I'll go get some dry clothes. No time. Wait, monster. At least take this before you go. What's this, a dip pen? No, wait, it's a modern fountain pen. Bone handle, gold nib. This is very fancy. Thanks, monster, but this isn't mine. Really? Are you sure? You were holding it pretty tightly when I found you. I was holding this? Then I suppose it has to be mine. Thanks, fisherman. I owe you one. Hey, don't call me a fisherman! Saw that coming a million miles away. Oh, where, oh, where is this going? It's nine o'clock. I believe it's time for the roll call. Is the defense not present? <laughs> Such unprofessionalism. If there is no defense, then this trial cannot proceed any further. We must make a ruling based on the evidence that has already been presented. I will now converse with the jury. We shall decide whether Prince Juan is guilty of murdering Major Hal, and of conspiring to murder the king. Your Honor, may I have a word? Fine, but make it quick. I am a firm believer that the trial must be orderly and punctual. There is no room for wishy-washy dilly-dallying, but it seems somewhat rash to end the trial session the moment it is due to start. Perhaps it will be prudent to wait five or ten minutes, in case the defense is a little time. See? He's not a bad guy. He's he's his heart's in the right place. He's just he's just wrong. It's okay to be wrong. His heart's in the right place, and that's what matters. Then the trial still has to proceed, and justice will be served. You are the prosecution, are you not? You have nothing to worry about. A guilty verdict is all but guaranteed. Thus confirming that you should not be on this case, because if you're going purely based on the evidence presented in the previous trial, then we should probably lean in the favor of the defense. But it's fine. Your, your Honor, you appear confused. I'm not here to secure the guilty verdict. Of course you are. You're a prosecutor. By definition, you're here to prosecute. No, my job description is to prosecute. But I'm here in this courtroom to ensure that justice is served. An unfair and unbalanced trial is not in the sp <laughs> An unfair and unbalanced trial is not in the spirit of justice. Shoot me. That's very noble of you, but if the defense is absent, then there is little that can be done. I'll hear no more about this matter. I will now talk with the jury. The... Uh, the fence is present, Your Honor. 
You're too late, Falcon. Wonder oh, JJ, you look like a total mess. Did you take a morning swim in the sign or something? S something like that. You all know? We are all present, and we are only three minutes over schedule. Let's not needlessly dirty the pure name of justice. Rules are rules, prosecutor. Falcon clearly has no respect for legal procedure. Frankly, for turning up while looking like a drowned rat, I ought to hold him in contempt of court. Your Honor. <sighs> but Your Honor. Rules are rules. One more word out of either of you and I shall have you both disbarred. Yes, yeah, is a fair and unbiased judge. It's a pity. The King of France was most looking forward to standing behind the witness podium. The King of France? He's here? Oh, we are not doing the trial after all? That's a pity. Uh, your majesty, what a surprise! We are- Well, you see, you know, it's my seventh time testifying against a would-be assassin. But it's the first time seeing a trial where the case has ended before it even began. Well, the defense, he, he was late and... Uh, oh, pish posh. France did become a great and dignified kingdom through rigorous punctuality. Let's go ahead with this trial. It'll be fun. Look, I'll see you to get us started. All right, Louis Phillip, best character confirmed. I swear to speak without hatred and without fear, so the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Did I get it right? That was perfect, your majesty. JJ, I trust you have no objections with the king testifying. Nope, no objections here. Going here with the trial is fine with me. And surely you wouldn't stand in the way of the king, would you, your honor? Go <laughs> oh, fine. Proceed with this cursed trial. Excellent. Now, your majesty, could you tell us your activities on the day of the murder? My activities? Well, I started my day with tea and toast, as I normally do. I was dressed in my PDs at the time. I think you can skip ahead a little, perhaps to your arrival at the Louvre. Ah, right, of course. Well, my entourage and I rendered through the Louvre's south entrance at around 9 o'clock. We passed through the South de Tibre with a little fanfare. Okay, that's we, we need to find out exactly what happened there. At the Grand Gallery, I unveiled the new painting and gave a short speech to inspire the citizens who attended. That's when I was approached by a man claiming to be the Prince of Spain. He presented a rose which was taken by Major Hal, and, well, I think you know the rest. Indeed we do, Your Majesty. Madams and Messieurs of the Court, what we have here is another testimony that establishes Prince Juan's guilt. And this is no ordinary testimony. It is the testimony of perhaps the most trustworthy man in all of France. Oh, you flatter me, prosecutor. But I am the trustworthiest in all the kingdom, aren't I? I have no doubts, Your Majesty. Nonetheless, I'd like to perform a cross-examination. How dare you doubt your king, the utter nerve. Oh, calm yourself, Judge. I have no qualms with standard legal procedure. Defense, please proceed. I want to see your best courtroom drama material. Then best courtroom drama material I shall provide. What happened in the Salle du Tibre? Your Majesty, you said that you passed through the Salle du Tibre uneventfully. Indeed. We stopped briefly to look at the paintings and then moved on to the Grand Gallery. Okay, but what exactly did you see there? Could you elaborate? What did you see in the Salle du Tibre? What did I see? Roman stuff, mostly. I meant a slide from the Roman artifacts. For example, did you talk to someone in the room who wasn't a member of your entourage? You're leeching, JJ. The king already testified that he has passed through without encountering anything of interest. I want the king to elaborate. I have reason to believe that this was a key moment on the day of the murder. I want the king to elaborate on exactly what and who he saw. And I suppose you will have to proceed, your majesty. Alright, let me think. So there was this giant doorstop, and there was that copper urn thing. Oh, and there was something else, now you ask. I was offered a box of chocolates by some peasant mademoiselle. I don't have much of a sweet tooth, but Major Hal was keen to accept the chocolate too on my behalf. Oh, was he now? Was he now? Hmm? Did that say something startling, prosecutor? N no. Please continue, your majesty. I think the prosecution is startled because he just came to the realization that I was not spouting drivel in the previous trial session. Well, that's debatable. To cut a long story short, your majesty, this mademoiselle may hold the relevance of the case at hand. Could you describe her? Really? She's relevant? Well, let me think. I didn't get a good look at her face, but she was a sorry-looking swan. Probably in her late teens or early twenties. A young, sorry-looking swan, you say? I don't suppose her name was Mademoiselle Signe? Mademoiselle Swanson. Mademoiselle Signe? Signe. That sounds familiar. Why, yes, I think it- I think that was it! She was called Mademoiselle Signe! I see. That is undoubtedly significant. Mademoiselle Signe gave chocolates to Major Hal minutes before he died. Now, just one minute. I see what you are alluding to, JJ. You're also suggesting that the gift of chocolates killed the Major. But that line of reasoning holds no weight because the evidence is circumstantial. Circumstance on my tail feathers. The King just testified that Major Hal ate the chocolates. 
Yes, that much is no longer in dispute, but you still have not proved the struggles of poison. Well, boy howdy, do I have some news for you on that, excuse me, on that note. Without that, we must assume the swan was merely offering a gift, rather than speculating that she is a murderer. Yes, yes. Shame on you, defense. Implicating a poor, innocent girl like that. Absolutely disgusting. Why I ought to end this trial. Hold on! I do have evidence that the chocolate was, in fact, poisoned. I don't believe you, JJ. If you had a piece of evidence that's significant, you would have slammed it down already. Present it! Well, I can't. It's not really the evidence folder type of evidence. Why am I not surprised? The drama was just getting good. Why'd y'all suddenly go quiet? Well, your majesty, it appears that the defense has just had a realization of his own. That is, that he lacks the evidence to support his theory. Since he cannot continue with his argument, I believe the cross-examination has come to an end. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Let me present my evidence. See, I had this chocolate lover back in my office and Sparrowson ate it. Stop, JJ. Stop while you have a little dignity. The results of whatever crackpot pseudo-scientific experiment you performed do not constitute valid evidence. He ate it and, he, and he's in the hospital from being poisoned. I think this trial is over, Your Honor. That's about, about, about bloody time. You may take your leave, Your Majesty. Very well. I am pleased that justice has been thoroughly served. Until the next assassination attempt, adieu, Majors. <laughs> Said casually. I will now deliberate with the jury. Oh! OBJECTION! Sparrowson! Sorry. I've always wanted to do that. Can't blame you. Sparrowson, are you okay? Yep. The doctor said that I have an iron stomach. Most of the poison passed straight through me. Speaking of which, I'd like to testify on that poison chocolate issue. I even got a doctor's note. See? It's too late. This trial is over. You cannot be serious, Your Honor. The contents of that note could turn this entire trial on its head. You must allow it. Why are you constantly arguing with me? I thought the job of a public prosecutor was to assist the judges. I told you, Your Honor. My job isn't to get a guilty verdict, it is to ensure that justice is served. I swear you are the worst prosecutor in all of France. Go ahead, Sparrowson. Read the contents of the note for the court to hear. <clears throat> this patient, Sparrowson, was submitted to Salpetri Hospital where he displayed a variety of symptoms. These included profuse sweating, a rapid fever, and severe nausea. The patient was diagnosed with poisoning, probably originating from the plant known as Asinite, aka Monkshood, aka Wolfsbane. When we questioned the patient, he admitted to having consumed a discarded chocolate wrapper potentially carrying the poison. Examining the contents of the patient's stomach confirmed this to be true. As a mental health professional, I believe this patient to be clinically- Oh, we can skip that bit. Uh, yada yada yada. Okay, here we go. Signed, Dr. Fowlert. Thank you, Spellison. I don't think I'll even need to question you. Between your note and the King's testimony, every angle of the chocolate wrapper's business has been covered. Awesome! W wait you say the King is here? You can get his autograph later. Right. So what happens now? Do I get cross-examined by the prosecution or something? To be honest, I, I see little to cross-examine. Do your damned job, prosecutor. Cross-examine that little annoying liar of a bird. Tear his testimony to shreds. Your Honor, he has a note signed by a medical professional definitively proving that the chocolate wrapper for the crime scene was poisoned. We could nitpick the details or delve into the doctor's credentials, but I fear it would be a waste of the court's time. Nobody wants that. Gah! So then what the hell do we do now? We do nothing, Your Honor. This poison wrapper has introduced an element of doubt into the case. The prosecution must accept that. But is the level of doubt reasonable? Is it significant? I think the members of the jury will agree. JJ's evidence is still tenuous. Tenuous. A step above circumstantial. You have proven a link. A not wholly illogical link. But you haven't proved beyond doubt that Major Hal was killed by the chocolate. You are still making far too many assumptions. Where is the empiricism that is required by any good court of law? Where are the witnesses who can back up your claims? Oh, I brought along witness. Maybe she can help. Is it Mademoiselle Signe? Sure is. Sparrowson to the rescue today. You. Sparrowson, it's great to see you on your feet, and you have been an enormous asset to the case. But what are you trying to pull off now? Surprise witness. Surprise witness? Yeah. I remember you mentioning that Coca Rico liked calling surprise witnesses. I thought that we could beat him at his own game. I brought the flower girl, Mademoiselle Signe, so she can testify about Prince Juan's character. You're putting me in a difficult position, Sparrowson. Just moments before you arrived, we, the court, established that Mademoiselle Signe is a possible suspect for this case. What? That can't be right. Sparrowson, it's okay. Monsieur Falcon, I would like to testify. Oh, and you want to testify? Do you understand what you are agreeing to? I do. I have accepted my fate. Prosecutor, do you have any objections to me calling upon Mademoiselle Signe as a witness? No, none. 
bearing in mind, of course, that you are here to defend Prince Juan, not to convict Mademoiselle Signe. Prosecuting is my job, of course. I have no objections either. Please proceed, witness. Speak the oath. The, the oath? Say that you swear to speak without hatred and without fear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I swear, Your Honor. I swear to speak without hatred and without fear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Good. Very good. Please state your name and occupation for the court record. My name is Catherine Marie Signe, and I am a flower seller. Mademoiselle Signe, tell the court of your activities on the morning of the 7th of January. Very well. I saw the king and his entourage enter the Louvre at 9 o'clock. I followed. When the king was stopped on the Salle de Tibre, I stepped forward and offered the king a chocolate. He refused, but a guard, a big dog by the name of Major Hal, was happy to oblige. The guard died because I, personally, had previously added poison to the chocolates. No! That can't be right! I used poison derived from Monkshood, a notoriously dangerous plant, as a flower seller it was simple to acquire. Why did you do it, mademoiselle? Why? Monsieur, people have tried to kill the king before, and people will try again. He is a vile man who has no respect for, respect or love for the people who suffer under him. I did it to better the French people. I don't believe that at all! Falcon, say something! Mademoiselle, are you being coerced or threatened? Speak freely. No, monsieur. I'm confessing of my own volition. It is my guilt, and nobody else's. Mm, I gained a little favor with the jury, and that might not be a good thing anymore. Well, defense, it looks like you wormed a confession out of this murderous pute. I suppose that gets your client, Prince Swan, completely off the hook. Lucky you. So, shall we wrap this court session up? No, we absolutely shall not. I'm not done yet. No, not yet. I have further questions for the witness, Your Honor. Further questions? To what end? You've already proved your client's innocence. I wish to uncover the truth. You aren't here to uncover the truth. You're here to defend Prince Swan, and you've done that job with a disgusting level of diligence. Nonetheless, I believe the Mademoiselle has omitted something of huge importance, and I wish to question her further. Something of huge importance? I won't allow it. Fine. Can I at least show something to the witness? You and the prosecutor are a right pair of moralizing blowhards, aren't you? You are doing my head in. Fine. If it will shut you up, I will let you show one magical mystery item to the witness. I can't imagine you'd love anything up your sleeve to change the flow of this trial, though. Monsieur Falcon, save it. I have nothing more to say. Um, not saving anything, because I have these two ticket stubs here. And I'm pretty sure it's it, it's directly because they're booked for Gaudier and Nicole Signe, who are your parents, whom you're trying to trying to get some cover for. Please take a look at this, mademoiselle. Train ticket stubs? Look at the names. Papa, Mama, in Vienna? Really? Are they safe? They are. The tickets were arranged courtesy of the fox. Then that means the wolf has nothing to hold me o hold over me. I can speak freely. Indeed. Go ahead, mademoiselle. What are you two muttering about down there? I'm amending my testimony, your honor. Members of the court, everything I've said today has been the truth. I did go to the Louvre on the 7th of January. I did present a box of poison chocolates to the king. Except, it was not of my own volition. I was threatened. I was forced to carry out the task of, under threat of harm. You see, my family's been struggling to get by. The winter has been harsh, and my flower business has been struggling. One day, a man approached me. A man I assumed to be kind-hearted. This man offered me 200 francs to get us through the cold. But I could not afford to repay the debt. When I attempted to bargain with the man, and he offered me a deal. Assist him with the murder, and he would drop all debts. Refuse, and he would ruin me and my parents. I obliged, because the alternative meant death for those I love. The name of the man who did this is Judge Romulus. Ha! Huh, what a creative story. This is obviously a last-minute desperate attempt at passing the buck. Oh, really? Well, what have, wait, wait, wait till I pull out the, uh, the um, what's it? Wait till I pull out the receipt of the chocolate and also the fountain pen. That I probably grabbed off you was the last minute. The sheer laziness of this girl to accuse a man she's never met before. She's blatantly floundering. Indeed, I've had dozens of these self-pitying yarns during my time as a prosecutor. Although admittedly, this is the first time I've seen a witness directly accuse a judge. Quite a brazen gambit. But in any case, these sorts of stories never turn out to be true. They are always proven to be fabrications born of desperation. Well, it's a good thing I have evidence saying otherwise then. I've never been more honest, monsieur. Listen, Mademoiselle Signe, I would like to believe your story, but accusing a man, a judge no less, of conspiring to murder the king is a hugely serious accusation. Do you have any proof to support your story? Proof? You say the judge lent you money. Then you both must have signed a contract when you made the transaction. The contract would suffice as proof. The contracts were all verbal, 
he said the money was a gift at first, and only later said I had to repay him. <laughs> How convenient. Of course the supposed contract doesn't exist. Mademoiselle has no proof because her story is a blatant lie. Falcon, you have to do something. Do we have anything to link Judge Rumulus to Mademoiselle Signe? A link? Of course. Members of the court, I know for certain that Mademoiselle's story is true. I can say with certainty that Judge Romulus has made contact with Mademoiselle Signe in the past. I know this because at this very moment, I am holding a key piece of evidence that links Judge Romulus directly to the crime scene. And that would be the chocolate receipt. I think you should take a look at this, Severin. Hmm? Me? You don't trust in the judge's hands? What? What is that? What does that piece of paper say? This is a receipt for a box of chocolates from Landa Hagelslack's Chocolate Emporium on the 6th of January, made out to... to a man named Romulus? <laughs> the writing on the receipt is clear. A man named Romulus bought chocolates on the day before the murder. These chocolates happen to have been of the same brand and flavor as the ones that were used in the royal assassination attempt. By itself, this evidence will not be definitive. It would only suggest that the judge has something of a sweet tooth. But taken in conjunction with the Mademoiselle's updated testimony, that would imply that the judge was directly involved in the assassination attempt. Judge Romulus, do you have anything to say about this? Yup. That receipt's not mine. I haven't stepped foot in the chocolate shop in years. You cannot be serious. The receipt is indisputable proof of your purchase. Indisputable? Watch me dispute it. What you have there is a scrap of paper with the word Romulus scrawled on it. Is it a forgery? Are there simply two men named Romulus living in Paris? I don't have a clue. What I do know is that you have nothing to prove that I was the one who signed that receipt. This is absurd. Do you want me to dig up court documents with your signature so we can undertake a handwriting analysis? That wouldn't be possible. I believe His Honor uses a rubber stamp for signing off on official court documents. <laughs> That'd be correct. Well, that's no matter. I don't need the judge's signature. I already have, in my possession, proof that the signature on the receipt belongs to Judge Romulus. Oh, but first things first. I believe you dropped your pen, Your Honor. Hmm. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's mine. Thanks for looking for that thing everywhere. I thought as much. Madams and messieurs, last night, I was assaulted outside Salpetriere Hospital. I did not see the assailant's face, but I did accidentally grab something from their garments as I was thrown into the Seine. Oh, so that's why you smell a fish. I wanted to say something, but I thought I might be rude. This fountain pen is the very item I grabbed. Did I, did I say this pen was mine? Uh, in closer inspection, I say I must have been mistaken. Save it, Your Honor. I'm not here to press assault charges. What interests me most about this pen is the ink it contains. It is emerald green in color. And as we all know, only baddies write in green. Well, yes, but more importantly, it's a rare and unusual choice of ink color. I would venture that only a dozen people in all Paris are ever good enough to write in green. And I would venture that only one of those arrogant people is named Romulus. So I so Judge Romulus lacked respect for classic penmanship. What of it? Take another look at the chocolate receipt, Sir Aaron. That receipt was signed with emerald green ink. It certainly is quite a coincidence. No, there is more room for coincidence. There is more. There is no more doubt. There is only one narrative that can tie this ridiculous string of evidence together. On the 6th of January, you, Judge Romulus, bought a box of chocolates with a custom filling. That custom filling contained poison originating from the flowers of Mademoiselle Signe, a street seller who owed you a debt. On the 7th of January, you, Judge Romulus, leveraged that debt to force the girl to present the poison chocolates to the king. Then, an idiot of a man by the name of Juan framed himself as the murderer in order to take the fall in Mademoiselle Signe's stead. You pushed for Juan's guilt by priming a witness once your toast unkingly, and when that failed, you pressured Mademoiselle Signe to take a full responsibility for the crime. That's the only thing that makes sense. Admit it! Fine, I do admit it, I did it. I purchased the chocolates, I added the poison, I put a peasant girl in debt so I could force I'm gonna take the fall. I was the one who wanted the king murdered, but there is not a damn thing any of you can do about it. I am the one who holds the gavel. I am the one who passes the sentences. With a snap of my fingers, I can have each and every one of you guillotined by the Palace de Austerlitz before nightfall. Who judges the judges? Who stands above me? Nobody! Not even God can condemn me when I sit so highly. Attempting to murder a king, corrupting the corde assis. What an utterly repulsive individual. Don't touch me, you dirty pig. You have no authority over me. He doesn't. I do. Take him away, Inspector. I'm not done. I'm not done with any of you. You're all guilty. You'll see. A revolution is coming. The rebels will overrun Paris. The king and government will fall. The Borgias will be slaughtered. We shall have a glorious Second Republic, a Republic free of class, where everyone is free and equal. Hey, hey, don't touch me! That's another ranting lunatic, Your Majesty. Ignore him. Of course. Carry on, Inspector. 
Oh, man. Now, please don't pull some last-minute twist like you did last time. I want to feel good about this victory, because that was amazing. Please let me feel good about this victory. What? What happens now? Uh... I... guess I'm supposed to take over the President Judge's duties? Well, given the surprising series of revelations that just took place, we believe the results are clear. We find the defendant, Prince Juan Carrito, to be cleared of all charges. We therefore find the defendant not guilty. Victory! And hopefully a victory that actually sticks this time. Wouldn't that be something? What what happens to me now? Mademoiselle, it is clear that you were coerced. However, you still played a significant role in the King's assassination attempt. By all rights, you must be tried for your crimes. I see. I cannot argue. But as it happened, due process was not followed during this trial session. Judge Romanus thoroughly disputed the proceedings. Consequently, I believe that most of the testimonies given during this trial session would not be seen as valid in a court of law. What does that mean? He's saying you're free to go. Correct. As a prosecutor, I see no crime to prosecute. R really Thank you so much, Monsieur! And thank you, Monsieurs. Without your help and assurances, I don't know where I would be right now. So, are my parents really in Vienna? I think so, but you have to ask the Fox for details. I don't know exactly what he arranged. Although, now that the Judge Roman supposes no threat, I suppose your parents will be free to move back to Paris. Actually, I may follow them to Vienna. You need a holiday after all this drama? Well, yes, but I also want to get away from here before... You know... Before the fighting starts. You mean the revolution Judge Romy just mentioned? He doesn't seem mentally stable. Pay him no mind. It's not just him, Monsieur. In the streets, everyone talks of an uprising. If you were smart, you'd get out of here, too. Thanks for the concern, Mademoiselle. But we're far from smart, so we're staying put. I see. Then good luck, Monsieurs, and farewell. Maybe we can meet again when this is all blown over. Wait, Mademoiselle, don't you want to have a quick celebratory drink? Oh, she's gone. So I guess it's just you, me, and the fox. Right, Falcon? That sounds good, Sparrowson. Take Prince Swan back to the aviary office. I need to sort out some paperwork with Severin. Okie dokie. Suppose the congratulations are in order. Uncovering the truth in the way that you did it, it was quite a feat. Everything went far better than I could have hoped, but you surprised me at the end with that little lie of yours. Lie? This trial testimonies are completely invalid? Bullcock. You and I both know that this trial has produced ample valid evidence for Mademoiselle Signet to be detained and tried. Even with the coercion accounted for, I bet she would still be found guilty of conspiracy or accessory to murder. So why are you holding back? Hmm. You know, ten, maybe even five years ago, I probably would have prosecuted Mademoiselle Signet. When I was fresh out of law school, I thought my role as a prosecutor was to condemn every potential criminal that came my way. I thought, if the guilty person ends up behind bars or on the hanging dock, then justice has been served. But as I gained experience, I started noticing the details. The details? The extenuating circumstances. The personal considerations. The gaps in the law where, even when due process is followed to the letter, good people are punished and wrongdoers walk free. I hated it. So I changed my role. I decided that I should not strive to secure a guilty verdict, but to ensure that justice is served. I could prosecute Mademoiselle Signe and she would def definitely be convicted. But that would not serve justice. You're a good lawyer. You're a good lawyer, Cocorico. You... Well, you're not terrible, Falcon. I must congratulate you, Senor Falcon and Senor Sparrowson. <laughs> what am I doing, sleezing that old accent? I, of course, meant. Congratulations, Monsieur Falcon and Monsieur Sparrowson. It's no big deal, we're just doing our jobs. No, no, your job ended when you proved my innocence. Everything after that was you going above and beyond your duties. Of course, I was counting on you to do so. A less lawyer would surely have stumbled or caved in. Oh, before I forget, your payment. Thank you, Monsieur Vilpes. This has been a strange case, but I'm glad the truth came to light. I'll see you out. Wait, Monsieur Vilpes, before you go, something's been bothering me. Why did you come to us in the first place? Surely there are much more reputable lawyers who could have done a better job. Oh? More reputable than the Falcon that stands before me? Uh, yeah. Falcon's got a sucky track record. True. He does have a mixed record, but his family name is hugely respected in the lawyering world. I choose Monster Falcon as my lawyer for that reason alone. Huh? Really? I've never heard of a leather lawyer named Falcon. Let's not go down this road, Monsieur Vilpes. I don't go by my old name for a reason. That is fair. We shouldn't be fixated on the past, should we? After all, it's already been and gone. The future is where our potential lies. That's what we should be paying attention to. A storm is approaching fast. You mean the revolution that the crooked judge mentioned? Indeed. I dare say the wolf is right. A rebellion is coming, one way or the other. Listen, Monsieur Falcon, you'll probably have a surge of work over the coming days. If you want me to dig up the dirt on anyone, please feel free to drop by my office at any time. 
Dig up the dirt? I'm a private investigator. It's what I do. Well, bear it in mind. Thank you, Monsieur Philpace. Good day, Monsieurs. I'm going to get a drink. Seriously, Falcon? What? I'm just going to ask if you want a tea or coffee. Nah. I am pleasantly surprised. This game is great so far. This game is amazing. That, that case, first of all, it's nice to actually feel good after a victory, considering the absolute gut punch of the first case. But second of all, they, they just really, they put effort into this. Like, they, I know I've been saying it the whole time, but it's, it's not just a, a carbon copy. It's not just a, 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 something, it's the, the, it's not just the style we know with the different coat of paint. It's, they're, they're telling their own story. They're, they're, they're having their own unique twist on things. It's really, really strong so far. And I'm looking forward to seeing where this all goes. So, that'll be it for now. Thanks for watching. See you for next time to catch you all tomorrow. Sorry, on Monday for some more Aviary Attorney. Goodbye.